Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at the track TRL 1440 lathe and more specifically the digital readout system on steroids that it has built in. And I say on steroids because this readout is going to move your X and Z axes automatically so you can cut apart without actually having to turn a hand wheel. And we're going to show you how simple and powerful this display is to use by inputting this part and showing you how easy it is to do. So we're going to start off by pressing the program button here. Now if you want to save this program for future use, you can use a numeric keypad to give it a name and then you can save it to a USB. But in this particular case, we're just going to go to the beginning. And what we'll do is we're going to face off the part first, then we're going to put a cycle event in there that will take into account this complete shape that we're going to input plus the size of the bar stock we're going to cut. After that, we'll put in a couple of grooves and finish off with a thread. So let's face it off first. The size of this material is 1.125 inches. So let's start just outside of that at 1.2 inches. Z remains at zero. We'll go past zero a little bit, 100 thou, let's say, negative. Z remains at zero. There's no chamfer or radius. Where is the tool gonna be? Left side, right side, or down the center of this line? We're gonna be cutting on the right side of the line that we're inputting here. So we'll press one for tool right. Feed rate, let's say we're going in at 10 inches per minute. But whenever you're cutting, if you find that your feed rate is too fast or too slow, you can always bump it up on the fly by using the up and down arrow keys. So you're always getting the perfect chips while you're cutting. Tool number one is what we'll start with. And what we'll do next is in a cycle event, we'll put all these next steps in plus the size of the bar stock. More cycle. Where are we going to begin? We're going to begin this cycle here at one quarter of an inch on X. Zero at Z. How many roughing passes do you want to use before you start cutting the final shape? Let's say eight passes to rough it out. We're going along the Z axis. So we're approaching along the Z. Feed rate is fine at 10 inches. Still tool number one is fine. Let's say 10 thou for a finishing cut. Slow it down a little bit at eight inches per minute for a finishing feed rate. And we can change tools, but in this particular case, we'll continue using tool number one to finish. Now, all we need to tell it is since it knows where it's starting, where is each step going to end? And this first particular step is gonna end at X is at half inch. Z will remain at zero because this leg here will be given the display by this 100 thou chamfer. So we're gonna turn, X goes to half inch. Z remains at zero because that chamfer of 100 thou will give it that first leg. Absolute set if this is a chamfer or incremental set if it's a connecting radius. Conrad, connecting radius. Absolute set because it is a chamfer, so absolute set. Then we're going to give it this next leg here, which is again half inch from X. Z's gonna move back three quarters of an inch, and we're gonna have a radius at the end at 0.125. So turn. I can punch in again 0.5 absolute, or I can just say since you're not moving anywhere, incrementally you stay where you were incremental zero z is moving three quarters of an inch negative and there is a radius at the end of 0.125 again connecting radius incremental set incremental set we take a look there's that chamfer because we gave it that second leg and we're not seeing this radius just yet because it doesn't know where it's connecting to. So let's give it that step. X is gonna go out to three quarters of an inch and Z will remain where it was. Turn, three quarters of an inch on X. 
z incrementally stay where you were incremental zero there's no chamfer or radius now we take a look there's that arc this look button comes in very handy as we go our next step is this here x remains at three quarters of an inch z moves back 2.125 inches turn again x doesn't move so incrementally stay where you were 2.125 negative there's no chamfer or radius take a look so far so good now we're going to do an arc that arc we're going to be cutting clockwise and the z or the x is going to go up to one inch and the z will incrementally move back the size of that radius which is 0.125 i can also put an absolute number of if I add these two together, I can put 2.5 or 2.25 absolute, but just to make it easier, I'll just put 0.125 incremental. Let's see what I mean by that. Again, we're cutting clockwise, so one for clockwise. X is going to go to the one inch. Z, like we were just saying, 0.125 incrementally negative. Radius is also 0.125, and there's no chamfer or radius at the end of that move. Take a look. There's that arc. So again, we're on the right path. That leg right there will mean that X is still at 1. Z goes back the full 3 inches. Turn. X remain where you are. 3 negative on the Z. No chamfer or radius. And then we're just going to put in this last little leg to give it the size of our bar stock at 1.125. Oops, turn first, 1.125. Z remain where you were. There's no chamfer or radius. And now, when we take a look, we have the complete shape of what it is that we're cutting. Now, in these next two moves, we're going to also tell the display the size of our bar stock. We're going to do that with a couple of position moves. Number one, X is going to remain where it was. Incrementally, don't move. Z is going to move back to absolute zero. What I mean by that is, now we're starting to give it the size of that bar stock. That dotted line is just simply showing a move. And we can do another position move to close that off. Or I can just say, end cycle. The display says, wait a second, you haven't completed that cycle. Do you want me to complete it for you? And we say yes. And that just means it puts in that final dotted line right there. So now we have the shape that we want to cut. And we also have given the display the size of the bar stock at the same time. So now that we've done that, we're going to do the two grooves here. This display doesn't have a grooving tool built in, so we're going to fool it a little bit by saying we're going to use a right hand turning tool. We're going to input in this line here, so we're going to start just outside of the three quarters of an inch material, say 0.85. We're going to go into the bottom of the groove, which is half an inch. It's going to be this line that we're inputting here, so that's 1.5 plus 0.125 at 1.625 negative. And we all do that with a turn. So X, again, we're starting 0.85 just outside of the material. Z is the 1.5 plus 0.1, or point, yeah, 0.125, so 1.625 negative. Z goes into the half inch which is the bottom of the groove. Z doesn't move. There's no chamfer or radius. Just like in the very first facing step, the tool is gonna to be on the right-hand side of this line. So tool right, number one. Feed rate, let's use two inches per minute to feed that uh, uh, grooving tool in. And our grooving tool will be tool number two. Now, We've plunged in that grooving tool, but we also want to pull that tool out just to be safe. Again, the display thinks it's a right-hand turning tool. 
because we are using a grooving tool, we want to add this extra position move. So position, we're going to end off where we started at just outside the material at 0.85 and Z is going to remain where it was. Uh, continue or no, this just simply means whenever you do a position move, you can choose to stop so the machine won't move farther until you press go. But in this particular case, there's no reason to stop the movement of the machine. So we're just going to say yes, number one, continue moving on to the next step. We're still using our grooving tool, which is tool two. Now I can go ahead and do those two steps again for this, or I can show you how to repeat this step and just move it over a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to hit more, repeat. What's the first and last steps that you want to repeat? Well, our first, our last step is 13 and our first step is 12. So event 12 is our first step. Our last one is 13. We're not offsetting on the X uh, incremental set whenever we offset, but we are offsetting on the Z by a quarter of an inch negative. We're only going to repeat that one time and we'll continue using tool number two. Take a look. Here are our two steps. Our first groove, our yellow dot shows the position move of the tool coming out of the material, moving over here, doing the next groove, pulling out to the next position move. So we've just done the two grooves and we'll finish off by doing a thread. So the major beginning to this thread is three quarters of an inch. The minor beginning is half an inch. It's 10 TPI, so the pitch of this thread is one divided by 10, one inch divided by 10, which is 0.1 and Z will start at three quarters of an inch negative. So the major beginning on the X was a three quarter inch. The Z was the three quarter inch as well, but negative. The minor begin was the half inch, the bottom of the thread. And the Z end, we're gonna go right into this groove here. So again, we're adding up these two numbers, 1.625 negative. The pitch we said was one divided by 10, which is 0.1. How many passes do you want to take to cut this thread? Let's say eight passes. And then we can do one or two spring passes to take the pressure off the tool to give it a really nice thread. Let's just say one spring pass. If it's a standard thread, 29.5, which is always inputted by the display will be correct. But if it's not a standard thread and it and you have a different plunge angle, you'd enter that in now. But in this case, it's a standard thread. It's an outside thread, so two for outside. And our threading tool will be tool number three. Take a look. There's our thread, and there's our completed part. It's just that simple. It's very, very easy to use this display. Now, let's go back and set up. Just do a couple more steps to show you what else is involved. Tool setup number one is we have to tell it what tools we're using in each of those steps. And tool number one was our right hand tool. So we have one set from before, but let's just say we're setting a new one. Right hand one. Now this is the point where I would move the carriage and touch off on the X and then enter in the diameter. Mic it and enter in the diameter and then touch off on the Z. But just to save time, I'm just gonna say it's a one inch bar stock we're touching off on and Z is zero. Radius of our tool tip, 0 0.031, let's say. And now if you ever find that you're cutting too deep or too shallow, tool wear, etc., whatever causes it, instead of going and touching the tool off again, you can just go in and modify that X or that Z so that you're always getting the proper um, number when you're touching off and cutting. Tool number two, set a new one. Again, even though it's a grooving tool that we're using, we're telling the display it's a right hand tool. Again, we go and touch off and say our bar stock is one inch, touch off on Z. Radius, we'll leave at zero. We'll go to our tool number three. Tool number three, we don't have to do an outside threading tool, so we go seven. X again, we touch off, 
say it's one inch. Z, we touch off and say that's zero. There's no modification required. And then we're done. Return again. So now that we have our tool setup done, we can click on our tool path. And here we have the path that our tool is going to take. So by pressing the button here beside step it'll and holding it, it'll show you how it's going to rough off, cut the shape, go back, cut the uh, final shape, go in, do the grooves, go in, do the eight steps plus the spring pass, and we're done. So everything looks good. But one thing the display shows you here is the red line that is the tool path as you go to each one of those cuts. And here we see a problem. That red tool path is actually going through our part. So what are we gonna do? That just means that it's using zero, zero as a home position. We need to set a new home position. So wherever the zero, zero is set on the part, we always want to move, for instance, three inches on the X and six inches on the Z away from that zero point. So it doesn't matter wherever we set zero, X and Z are always gonna be three and six inches off or whatever number you end up putting, end up putting in. Now we take a look at the toolpath, everything looks great. There are no red lines going through the part itself. Everything's going to our home position, A-OK. -okay. So now what you can do is save those tools so you don't have to go through the setup again. And that's it. You have just completed that part. All we have to do is go and run it. And you have completed a part in a fraction of the time that it would have taken you to do it by hand using the hand wheels. And that's what makes this control so powerful. And as you can see, easy to use.